So I am at the Beckley Cemetery off of Helmer Road in Battle Creek, Michigan. Sometimes when you drive through an area and you see a small cemetery, it's easy to, to dismiss it because you're busy doing other things. But what I like to do on this channel is to connect people with history and behind every cemetery, no matter how big or small, there's always some stories to tell. So today I'm going to try to find out some of those stories of this small cemetery that has less than 500 people buried here. And let's see what we can learn. And perhaps the next time you drive by this cemetery or others in your community, you'll be reminded of some of these stories. So come along and join me. In 1833, 25-year-old Joseph Stewart, a native of Romulus, New York, made his journey to Michigan and settled in an area known as Oak Openings in western Calhoun County. Recognizing the need for a cemetery in the neighborhood, he set aside a portion of his land for this purpose, offering burial plots without charge. The cemetery was originally known as the J.W. Stewart Graveyard. As you might expect, Joseph Stewart and his three wives are buried here along with several of his children. When a new law in 1859 required each township to make provisions for burials, Stewart turned his property over to Battle Creek Township. In later years, the area became known as Beckley Corners, named after pioneer settler Ira Beckley. The cemetery was later renamed Beckley Cemetery after Ira Beckley. The oldest grave marker is dated 1826. However, local natives as of this 1971 article, when the cemetery was named a historic site, claimed that there were burials as early as 1812. This of course would imply that there already was a small cemetery on the property when Stewart originally purchased the land in 1833 as indicated by at least the oldest marker in the cemetery. Now let's explore some history of the Beckley family. Ira Beckley was born in Wayne County, Michigan and moved with his parents to Ann Arbor around the age of eight. In 1862, at the age of 40, he moved to the south of Battle Creek with his wife and children, establishing the Beckley Farm near the intersection of present-day Helmer Road and Beckley Road. Ira was a successful farmer who was well-respected in the community. I ran across some interesting articles where he was asked to attend a court hearing of a young man who stole some bales of wheat from him and had been caught by the police and the young man confessed and said that he'd stolen them from Ira's farm. The boy wheat stealer, as the article describes, Mr. Aravine Peck, stole 42 bushels of wheat from Ira with an accomplice named John Kelly who made his escape. Mr. Peck was bonded over for $500 and sent to jail. Another interesting story that mentions him is he had a team of horses tied up in downtown Battle Creek. They became frightened and broke and ran down Main Street, finally coming to a stop knocking over a pile of wood somewhere along South Street. He was also a strong supporter of the Beckley School, which was, along with the cemetery, eventually named after him. Ira Beckley died in 1891. His cause of death was described as a rupture. However, it was also noted that his physician amputated his quote unquote left limb right before he died. So it's not really clear on which limb that was, but it doesn't sound like he was very comfortable at the end. His wife, Betsy Beckley, was also considered a highly esteemed settler in the community. She passed away in 1906 while celebrating her 87th birthday. She had had some ice cream and cake and fell ill and passed away right there in front of her family. You know that cake was to die for. I bet it was called Death by Chocolate. Mm. The Beckleys had five children. The oldest was a daughter, Minerva Beckley. She never married and remained working on the farm until she passed away in 1923. She was also considered a well-respected member of the community. The next sibling was Anson Ira Beckley, who was a carpenter and builder and also did some farming. He was a veteran of the Civil War, and he passed away the same year as Minerva did in 1923. Edson Beckley was a member of the Independent Order of Odd Fellows and died in 1913 at his home in East Leroy. Emily also remained in the Beckley Corners area 
Her husband, Jerome Jordan, was also a farmer. She died at the age of 80 in 1931. The last child was Alma Hoagland, and she died at the age of 53 after a prolonged illness. Minerva, Anson, and Edson were buried at Beckley Cemetery. Emily and Alma were buried at Oak Hill Cemetery. Alma's husband, Charles Hoagland, was a grocer as well as involved in many other businesses. Interestingly enough, he once sued the Kellogg Cornflake Company for $400. I couldn't find what the outcome of that deal was. But he was also in Chicago once and arrested by a police officer accused of soliciting for gambling. And he accused the police officer in front of the judge of being intoxicated. So I'm sure that trial was pretty interesting too. When exploring history in a community, farmers often get overlooked in lieu of more interesting and colorful profiles to explore. However, in the 1800s, especially when Battle Creek was forming as a village, the success of the farming community was what made the mills, the food, the livestock, and even Sands McCamley downtown possible. Man-made canals have no purpose without mills, and mills cannot produce flour without grain. So let's take a look at some of the pioneer farmers that have their final resting place here at Beckley Cemetery. Charles Miner was born in 1833 in Erie, Pennsylvania. He came to Michigan in 1866, and after spending a year in Harmonia, settled on a farm right where you would find Miller's Time Out and Bronson Family Medical Center today, not far from the Beckley Cemetery near I-94. He was married to Naomi Langdon in 1865, and together they raised five children in this area, living here for approximately 40 years. He took a lot of interest in the Beckley School and was the director at the time of his death. He died in 1907 at the age of 74 after he had eaten his evening meal following a long day's hard work while he was reading a book. Uriah Owen was born in Oswego County, New York in 1820. In 1848, he married Catherine Holmes, and together they moved to the Battle Creek area in 1863. They raised 10 children, six sons, and four daughters on their farm in the East Leroy area. He was considered an energetic man and among the kindest of neighbors. He died in 1885 at the age of 65. His wife Catherine was born in Wolcott, New York in 1825 on Christmas Day. She was also well respected in the community. Her father served in the War of 1812 and she often told stories of sitting with her mother, scraping lint and sewing bandages to alleviate the suffering of the wounded. She passed away in 1906 at the age of 80. Jay Cadwell and his first wife Susanna were married in 1853 where they moved to a timber farm in the Climax area, and they lived there for 12 years. In 1872, after her father's death, they sold the farm and purchased a new farm just south of where Ira Beckley's land was. Susanna was known in the area as a skillful taxidermist, and their home was filled with specimens. She and Jay never had any children. She died in 1884. Jay Cadwell remarried to Agnes Smoke, and they had a daughter named Bessie. In 1906, he retired from farming and moved to the downtown area of Battle Creek, where he worked with an undertaker. One evening, he was walking home from the grocery store along the railroad tracks. He was hit by a speeding Wolverine train. According to witnesses who were shouting at him, he did not hear the train coming. His body was tossed into the air and spun around three times doing complete somersaults before finally coming to rest on the south side of the tracks. He was killed instantly. A story circulated after his passing that he made a remark to the undertaker that he was working with just a few days prior that he wondered who would be next to occupy this slab when they were preparing a body for shipment. Ouch. Agnes remained in the area until her death in 1932. She died at the age of 73. There are veterans from several different wars buried at Beckley Cemetery. So let's explore some of those stories now. Let's begin with Jason Souls, who was born in Fulton County, New York in 1826. In 1853, he moved to the East Leroy area, just south of Battle Creek. During the Civil War, he served with the 1st Michigan Sharpshooters, 
and was the first man in his regiment who was wounded at the Battle of the Wilderness, a battle that took place in May of 1864 in Virginia. The outcome of the battle was determined to be inconclusive as to who won, as both sides withdrew after three days of fighting, which resulted in 3,723 killed and almost 20,000 wounded. Souls lived 18 years in the Battle Creek area and suffered from the wounds that he received that day in battle until the day he died in 1902 at the age of 76. James Moore was born in Kelton, Missouri. He served in the Army during World War II and was wounded in action in the Pacific Theater. Following the war, he was married to his wife Nadine and they had four daughters. He worked for the Oliver Corporation in Battle Creek for 11 years. In October 1959, he was in Missouri on the way to visit his father, who was in the hospital. It was raining, and he was on his motorcycle. A car turned in front of him in the dark, not seeing James on his motorcycle, and he collided with it. He died from his injuries after being taken to the same hospital his father was recovering in. Robert Romig Sr. served in the Korean War in the U.S. Navy. Following the war, he moved to Battle Creek, during his years here, he worked for the General Motors plant in Kalamazoo, retiring in 1993. He also worked for Wholesome Bakery and Eaton Manufacturing. One of his favorite passions was boating and fishing, which is depicted on his headstone. He passed away in 1995 at the age of 66, following a prolonged illness. William Craig was a 1965 graduate of Lakeview High School and later attended Michigan State University for two years before volunteering in the U.S. Army in October 1967. He attended non-commissioned officer school at Fort McClellan, Alabama, Air Force Infantry School at Fort Benning, Georgia, and Advanced Training School at Fort Polk, Louisiana, before being assigned to Vietnam with the 101st Airborne Division, 503rd U.S. Infantry as a sergeant. He was killed in action in March of 1969 during military operations by fragments from an exploding booby trap while on patrol. He'd been in combat six months. His name was later inscribed in a memorial plaque at Lakeview High School where he'd been involved in several clubs and organizations and he was posthumously awarded the Bronze Medal for Heroism and the Purple Heart for Fatal Wounds Suffered in Combat in South Vietnam. That's going to do it for today's exploration of the Beckley Cemetery in Battle Creek, Michigan off of Helmer Road. I hope you enjoyed this little adventure into the stories of the people that are buried here. If you liked today's video, please take a minute to hit the like button. Leave me a comment, tell me what you thought, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time on my next adventure into history. Thanks for coming along. Thank you.